turned green and Chip took off. Police seen us and pulled us over. Dave just let me do the talking. <gasps> Close your butt cheeks. Do you know why I pulled you over? Sorry, officer. I I didn't know I couldn't do that. Now you know. Get out of here. Just, just get the fuck out of here. And that's it. That's the end of the story. In this one, we're going to talk about protein myths. Okay? And namely, some of the things that protein has been purported to cause. Different ailments, diseases, whatnot. Uh, first and foremost, let's start with the most obvious, which is kidney disease. A lot of people have said, you don't want to consume excess of protein, it's hard on the kidneys. If you look at the research data, that doesn't seem to be supported by anything out there. It's been postulated that it'd be hard on the kidneys because protein um, has a nitrogen component, as we discussed in the last video. And that nitrogen component has to be eliminated in urea. Urea is eliminated through the kidneys. So it's been postulated that people who have kidney disease, because people who have kidney disease are usually put on low protein diets to limit the ammonia load of their kidneys and how much urea they have to excrete. One, there's actually conflicting data as to whether or not that's beneficial for, for kidney disease patients. Um, and two, people who have healthy kidneys, it's not something they have to worry about. Um, there's no evidence that protein harms a healthy kidney. None. Zip. Zilch. In fact, I forget which stage of renal disease uh, it was, but there was, some, there was a study where they actually supplemented uh, renal disease patients with 25 grams of whey protein isolate and saw that th their health actually improved. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. I'm not saying to go out and if you have kidney disease, supplement with protein. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, Protein doesn't harm a healthy kidney, and it's up for debate as to whether protein restriction uh, improves kidney disease. There's, you know, if you get carbohydrate too high, if anything that gets too high in the bloodstream, if you get glucose too high, it can harm the kidney. Above, I think, 168 milligrams per deciliter sustained can harm the kidney. Um, fatty acids too high in the bloodstream can harm the kidney. So it's more about sustained solute load. Um, the best thing you can do is drink a lot of water. If you're drinking a lot of fluid, um, you're helping flush those nutrients out and uh, you're helping filtrate those and it's gonna, keep, it's gonna help keep you healthy. Uh, next one is liver disease. Some people have said, well, protein causes liver disease because a lot of amino acids are processed by the liver. Doesn't seem to be true. In fact, there's some evidence that um, branch chain keto acids can actually help with liver regeneration, I believe. So, it doesn't seem to, to cause in liver disease. Uh, it doesn't seem to negatively impact the liver. In fact, the liver, one of, their main, one of the main fuels of the liver uh, is amino acids. Um, so it doesn't seem to have any negative effect on the liver. Heart disease. This comes about from the, the association of meat with heart disease, um, high saturated fat diets with heart disease. But if you correct statistically for the uh, increased saturated fat, if you talk about lean cuts of protein, um, higher protein diets have actually been associated with a lower incidence of heart disease. Like you look at the Mediterranean diet, which is higher protein. Um, if you're substituting lean cuts of meat, it, it looks like substituting protein in, in place of carbohydrates and fats and or fats has a beneficial effect on protecting against heart disease. Cancer, this is the big one right now because of the, the movie What the Health, that apparently um, eating two eggs is, a, is the same thing as sticking a gun to your temple and pulling the trigger. Um, not true. Um, there is actually some evidence that, um, uh, well, in our lab we did, we did a study where we showed that higher protein diet uh, reduced tumor progression compared to a high carbohydrate diet. So it looks like maybe if you sub some protein for some carbohydrate, it may have some beneficial impacts. Now, this was in, in rats, so I don't want to oversell it. But um, as far as cancer goes, meat only really gets associated with cancer because, one, high saturated fat, high, high calories, higher overall calories. And two, uh, people who eat high meat diet tend to eat lower fiber. So if you correct for fiber, 
and, the, and, and nutrients, it seems to kind of cancel out or um, reduce the association with cancer. And finally, um, if you overcook meat, so if you char meat, the charred portions of meat contain what are called polyaromatic hydrocarbons, which do seem to be carcinogenic. Solution for that is don't char your meat, and if you do, cut out those charred portions, and that should uh, protect you. Um, but there's no real good evidence that protein is a main cause of cancer. That, that does not seem to be the case. It seems to be more driven by genetics, environment, and um, overall energy intake. Bone. This is a very, very popular myth that high-protein diets cause bone loss. Um, this came about because people have shown that it is true when you have a higher protein diet, you show increased calcium excretion, okay? But just like protein balance and just like caloric balance is a balance, calcium balance is also a balance between ingestion and excretion or absorption and excretion. In all the studies looking at protein that I've seen with bone, where they look at overall bone health, uh, if anything, protein has no effect or a slightly positive effect on bone health. So what actually you're seeing is even though there's an excretion, increased excretion of calcium, there seems to be increased absorption of calcium from a high protein diet, okay? Further, bone is made up of also not just calcium, but da 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 protein. So it may make sense that a higher protein diet could improve bone health it certainly does not seem to be a negative towards bone health. If you want my N of one anecdote, uh, whenever I get a bone mineral density scan done, uh, I am always nearly off the chart. I am so far on the high side of normal, I almost don't show up on the, the, the chart. So best thing you can do for bone, resistance train, eat enough calcium, eat enough vitamin D, and protein seems like it might help as well. Blood tests, here's another one I get. Lane, my BUN was elevated in my blood test. My doctor says uh, my kidneys are gonna fail or um, my, creat my creatinine was elevated or... So these are markers of kidney failure. People who are in kidney failure will 100% have elevated markers of creatinine and elevated blood urea nitrogen, BUN. Just because you have elevated BUN or elevated creatinine does not mean that you are in kidney failure. I'll say it again. People who have kidney failure will have elevated levels of BUN and creatinine. Just because you have elevated levels of BUN and creatinine does not mean you're in kidney failure. Okay? People who eat a higher protein diet have higher blood urea nitrogen they tend to have higher creatinine. That is not dangerous. Often, even people who just lift weights have higher levels of liver enzymes as well, like ALT or AST. First off, if these elevations are modest, which they usually are, I would not be concerned. If you are concerned, then I would suggest getting some kind of liver or, and or kidney function test done. And I think you'll find that your function will turn out just fine. Okay, there is no evidence high protein harms a healthy kidney or liver. Again, I am not a physician. If you are worried about this stuff, take the advice of a physician. But if you're really worried about it, I would say don't just get a blood test done and your BUN slightly elevated and say, oh my God, uh, my doctor says I have kidney failure. Um, if you're really that concerned, then get a kidney function test done. And then if you have impaired kidney function, then discuss the possibility of maybe you need to reduce your protein intake. Again, it's debatable. But just looking at numbers on a sheet, this is the problem with a lot of doctors out there and why I'm such a fan of uh, services like SteadyMD, uh, which um, you know give you doctors that lift, uh, doctors that are into fitness. It's a, it's a service uh, my friend Dr. Spencer Nadolsky is involved in. And you can pay like 80 to 90 bucks a month. You've got a concierge doctor who you can text you can call, they can write your prescriptions, and they lift. So again, they're not gonna freak out when they see your BUN elevated like a lot of general practitioners are because general practitioners, 
a lot of times don't look at the patient. I had a doctor one time come in, look at me, look at my BMI and say, you really should lose weight. Even though I was leaner than 99% of his patients that come in, he said I should lose weight because the number on the chart didn't fit what it was supposed to. When you start, when you stop treating patients like patients and you start treating them like numbers on a chart, that's a problem. So any reasonable doctor, any good doctor could look at someone and say, okay, they're a weight trainer, they're a higher protein diet, their blood urea nitrogen is elevated. That's pretty normal. Um, but when people don't pay attention to their patients and don't pay attention to what's going on, uh, that's when they make uh, really erroneous uh, diagnosis. So again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. Uh, I would uh, advise you to seek a competent medical professional. Just because somebody has DR in front of their name does not make them a competent medical professional. Make sure they're good. Make sure they pay attention to you. Uh, and again, that's why I recommend services like SteadyMD. Um, but yes, these are some of the main protein myths out there. Um, and uh, I don't really know where a lot of these came from. It's interesting that you know when, when, when the recommendations for protein, carbs, and fats were put together in the food guide pyramid, carbs and fats were, have always been kind of, what can we get away with? And protein is, well, what's the minimum we need to maintain nitrogen balance? Protein is always viewed as a minimum because the research for dietary guidelines sprang up out of agricultural industry. And agricultural protein is your most expensive thing to produce. Okay, carbohydrates, cheap. Fats, pretty cheap. Protein, very expensive. Okay, so ag looks at what is the minimum cost we can use to produce a certain amount of crop yield. So a lot of our old protein recommendations weren't made on the basis of health. They were made on the basis of this is the minimum to prevent a deficiency since protein is expensive and people may not be able to afford it. Well, we don't really have those problems now. So... Again, um, protein has a lot of myths around it. Hopefully this video has helped you guys understand protein a little bit better, understand some of the myths a little bit better. Uh, if you like this video, like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you next time, guys. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to set up your protein intake.